Nick Ferrios is a fashion designer, an author, a red carpet expert, and a consulting producer on Bravo's Project Runway. Celebrities including Heidi Klum, Katy Perry, and Beyonce have worn Nikolaiki designs, and NB Nick Varios line can be found exclusively on the QVC UK. He also, in case you're wondering, he also has a very popular YouTube channel, Fashion School with Nick Varios, which has over 275 million subscribers. So if you're not one of them yet, definitely check that out today, all right? Okay, so let's get to meet Nick and he's going to introduce us to our special guest. Hi, Nick. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi, Nick. Woo! Thank you for being with us this morning. You look so great. Where are you? What is your background? I, I know. I'm, um, I'm in the front row of the debut show. <laughs> Good. Okay. Well, thanks for taking some time for us. You're so busy. <laughs> Well, thank you, thank you. I'm so excited for Three Days of Fashion and especially this first ever online Three Days of Fashion, which I think is just amazing. So I, I can't wait to get started, especially here on the second day. I, I thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody who's out there and everybody who's attending virtually this wonderful first ever Three Days of Fashion online. So I'm so excited to get started. So we have an FIDM panelist interview discussion to end all panelist discussions. And we have a fabulous FIDM alumni and it's celebrity fashion designer, Ashton Hirata. He began his company, Ashton Michael, in 2005. That's 15 years ago, all right? I'm aging him just a little bit. Ashton, even though he looks like a baby, Ashton caters to chart-topping artists of all genres, including Beyonce, Post Malone, Ariana Grande, Boy George, and Lizzo, to name just but a few. Ashton created iconic looks for the Super Bowl, as well as the Grammys from his Hollywood design atelier. He was a finalist on Netflix fashion reality design competition, Next in Fashion. Most recently, to help during this pandemic, Ashton created face masks DIY masks in his Hollywood showroom to assist many in the community. He even took it a step further by offering a free pattern and instructional video to have people make their masks at home. Oh, and last but not certainly least, Ashton is an FIDM alumni, having graduated in the early 2000s. Everyone, please help me welcome Ashton Michael. Uh, well, if that wasn't an introduction, <laughs> I'm just gonna bring you around everywhere I go and be like, just tell everyone about me. <laughs> was that good? Did I do okay? It was beautiful. It was gorgeous. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Ashton. I'm so happy to be here and so happy to see all them tattoos. Look at you. I mean, one of us had to get dressed up, right? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um, I mean, so where, first of all, where are you? I am actually in LA right now. Uh, obviously, okay. I'm really traveling due to the pandemic, but um, I'm in LA and going to be headed to my showroom very soon. Oh, wonderful. Now, you know, before the pandemic, like, did you have any plans? Where would you be right now? Did you have something scheduled for around this time? Like where you said you, you might have been traveling. What would you have been doing? I mean, so much of my work encompasses traveling for clients as well. So even something as silly as going to a fitting or actually having in-person creative conversations or pre-pro meetings, uh, they're done like this now. So uh, the distance I travel goes from my home to my fabric vendors to my showroom. So it's very limited now. Right. I know. It's funny because, you know, the fashion industry, we have had to reconfigure because of the pandemic. Um, you know, our industry, as you were discussing, is very hands-on. Yeah. And But at the same time, we also are innovators. And we go for the next. What's new? So this, albeit it became a challenge, but at the same time, I think um, in the fashion industry, as fashion designers, as fashionistas, we, we thrive to innovate. So it's almost like, okay, you want to bring it? We'll bring it. Yeah. <laughs> 
you know, you know, you got to think on your toes, no matter what fields you're in, and especially in the artist's field, it's not going to be just, here's the blueprint of what we're doing. It's sort of like, here's a general idea, and you got to just go with it. Perfect, perfect. All right, so let's get to it. Let's get to some wonderful questions. I want to know all about your creative process. Um, let's say you're working with a client for a specific project. I know you've done the Super Bowl, Grammys, Post Malone. We'll talk about some of the pink outfits with the sleek ones, some of my favorites. Um, how do you go about your research? Like, what do you do first? I think that a lot of the students out there are wondering, um, you know, what that creative process is. Like, how do you know where to start? Do you start with sketches? Do you start with the client? Um, if it isn't a client, if it's a show, like a collection, how do you begin? Um, I think those are two different things. For me, collections are sort of my freedom. It's the time where I get no restrictions. I get to do whatever I want and I get to express myself 100% me. Uh, so that part is strictly me. And that's a very um, interesting way. I mean, I could be inspired by literally anything and it sounds like a very strange cliche thing to say. Oh, I'm inspired by it, but it's true. I mean. <laughs> look around for inspiration it could come from trauma in my life it could come from something happy that happened i saw with somebody else it's it's really just be a sponge be susceptible to any sort of energy around you and take that in and if it triggers you and you feel something then then go with it it doesn't matter you don't have to justify it the beauty of fashion and any other art medium is that we get to do things as long as we're in a respectful boundary to release that energy to allow others to appreciate our art and that's really beautiful I, I think that's so well said. No, that's well said. What were you going to say? When it comes to doing client stuff, um, you know, it is technically a collaboration. They're obviously coming to you because they like the product you produce or your general vision. But you have to take in mind something I'm going to make for client A, I'm not necessarily going to make for client B based on whether it's religious views, uh, body type, preference. It doesn't matter. So you really have to be respectful and aware of who you're dealing with each time. In addition, like you said, I've worked on TV shows, I've worked on, you know, live tours and concerts, but someone who's performing on ABC is not going to have the same exact protocol as someone at the Super Bowl who's not going to have the same protocol as their own world tour. There's regulations that we have to make sure that this is covered and this is not, and we're still respecting the artist. So with celebrity and personality, it really becomes a lot of cooks in the kitchen. So we start off with a pre-pro meeting with creative. Hey, we want red, black, and white, and we want them to look like this. Great. I take that concept. I draft up some ideas. I send it back. They go, cool. We don't want sleeves. Great. Go back. <laughs> it's a lot of toggling. Right. And then you find the final sort of consolidated. You just start to do the final sketch, get it approved, and hopefully when the fitting happens, it all goes well. <laughs> And then, and then there's the fitting. So all of a sudden, it's like, you know, when I said that I wanted sleeves, can you take them off now? I meant I wanted longer sleeves. Why didn't you understand that? <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy. I've done, I've done both where, you know, red carpet dressing, where they just sort of choose the gown and they wear it, or custom. And then the custom gets so like, oh, my goodness. You know, it's like, all of a sudden you're like dealing with a Marie Antoinette, you know, that like, I mean, that's, you know, that's been my experience. But at the end, of course, when you see it on the stage or you see your design, your creation, it's like, there's my baby. Right. <laughs> it's super gratifying. And I do think that the beauty of doing custom is it challenges you. It's not saying, here's your collection, I want to wear your collection. It's saying, here's your collection, how do we tweak it to make it even better, more applicable, and make it even more of a statement. So I, I love the fact that I get to do both. It really does give me two avenues to be completely satisfied in my expression. Wow. And if you guys who are tuning in and wondering, when we're discussing clients, we're talking about Lizzo, Post Malone, Ariana Grande and Beyonce, okay? So just saying, just saying. <laughs> I know, Ashton is blushing right now. If you could see under his beard, he is blushing. This is the only reason why I have it. <laughs> <laughs> to cover up, to cover up. <laughs> um, you know, let's go back to that inspiration. I think that what you said was really good about just get inspiration um, from wherever you want. You never know where you, you grasp it. We had a student in, um, in our advanced fashion design program, our debut program, who we wanted to find out 
where she could get some inspiration. And she started talking about an aunt of hers who is mentally challenged or mm. was mentally challenged. And she used to put her clothes on backwards. Amazing. And she, ama and she was inspired by that. And then she created a mini collection where the, co you know where I'm going with this. I know, I know. I'm getting the, ooh, yeah, like the coats were like put on backwards and the skirt was so sort of askew. Mm -hmm. And while, you know, you, you might've thought, oh, she's being a little avant-garde. There was this wonderful, thoughtful, inspirational story, personal story behind it. And so I always say to students of fashion design, like, you know, go in there, go deep. It might be like therapy, but you know, go in there and always keep a diary. Don't you suggest that you should like at least have a journal and put everything in there. It doesn't have to, I would rather not see fashion. I'd rather see like National Geographic insects, you know? Yeah. Yep. I think that what you're saying is 100% valid. Um, don't take it so literal. Don't say, here's my inspiration. Be like, I don't know, I felt like this this way. And then I kind of was inspired, but like just meld them together. The beauty of fashion is you're taking something one dimensional, just a piece of something flat and you're able to create something three dimensional. So create your mind the same way. Don't think one dimensionally, think three dimensionally. Good, good, good advice. Now going back to the clients, now, I know that, for example, on Project Runway, we always have that client challenge. And there's always another edition of a challenge where the designer, the designer, loses. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Tim Gunn uh, impersonation. That was they, good. Lose, they lose themselves uh, within the design. Um, how do you find the right balance where you're not being um how shall i say a dressmaker but you're still a designer because there is a difference you know you're not making something that the client just wants and you lost your the ashton michael mm -hmm. of it or or do you do do you know that the, the clients do come to you because they kind of have a, a knowledge of what they're going to get correct um it, it is a, a tricky question because it's something i have to deal with frequently um and these future artists will as well whether it's working for their boss or a creative director or themselves you're going to be challenged on if something is on brand or feels right to you but ultimately i think that this is probably not advice that most people would get if it does not feel right do not take the job mm. there will be a million more opportunities there will be a million more clients there'll be a million more gigs there'll be a million more collections if it does not feel right to you and it is over the line of compromising what you feel is your brand direction, gracefully back out and say, I look forward to working with you in the future on a project that aligns a little more with my brand. Whoa, wait, hold on. I need to write that down. That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> that, the main thing is people operate a lot of times on fear and the fear of not getting the job, the fear of having someone yeah, else. Yeah. Fear yeah. of not getting into college. The fear, fear is such a toxic thing. And once you relinquish all of those feelings, fear becomes nothing. It becomes powerless. And so when I first started my career, I would take any job, create whatever. And looking back, I'm like, I can't even put this in my portfolio. I look crazy. Like, <laughs> what did I just make? And I, I don't even like it, but like I got paid because I was poor and I was tired of eating ramen for the day. But like, in the end, you go through these, these like learning creative lessons and, you know, 16, 17 years later, I'm not saying I'm at a position to say no, I'm at a position to say yes to myself. And I'm saying, hey, this is going to stress you out. You're not going to be proud of it. It's just not worth it. So like mm -hmm. say thank you and move on. And then usually, and I'm not joking, within like hours, if not a day, guess what happens? Another job comes along. Exactly. Right going through these emotions but as humans we're so struck instantly to say this is going to be amazing i have to take it yeah but we have to let that go and say cool thank you it's not really working for me I yeah no it. i you you're just you just triggered like 20 wedding dresses that i did that i really didn't want to do you know and, <laughs> like i just i exactly i second what you said it's like you know uh, i think we're I think you're a brother from another mother because I all I also said yes to every single thing because I was afraid. I was afraid that that would be the last 
gig. That would be the last dress I would ever make. And so I said, yes, yes, yes. And I ended up just, I realized, I'm like, oh, you know what? Just like you said, I'm like, that had nothing to do with me. That dress, that jacket, that design, that wedding dress, she could have just gone to David's bridal. Like right. what? But yeah. here's the flip side I will say. There are times where I feel a beautiful opportunity and how to build a relationship and how to almost inspire the client. So there has been times where I'll take the job and say, I know I can convince them otherwise because I know it's going to look great on them. So I'll take the job, go through the pre-pro meetings and say, that's really great. Now, can I tell you what we're going to do? And right. then I go into what we need to do. And then what a lot of times you'll realize is that they only have a library of references that is so big you possibly have a some a, a larger library or a different right. library that they just didn't know and they're like actually that is exactly what i wanted i just didn't know how to explain it so there's one side that says hey if it feels really icky in your stomach and it feels like it's not going to work and it's so off brand respectfully decline and the other side is saying hey maybe we can convince them to be on our team and create something really magical and beautiful together so there are two sides of that spectrum for me for sure Good, good. Now tell me what um, is one of the biggest challenges you've come across in the entertainment industry and um, how did you overcome it? Um, I think one of the biggest challenges is don't try and be cool. Just <laughs> don't. Just literally stop. It's like, for me, it's so like, this is what I look like because I am... I'm going to work to work. I'm going to work to do my job, to be creative, to do whatever. I'm not trying to be something. And I think a lot of people, when they say, oh, you get to hang out with someone. So no, I waited for 17 hours to do the fitting. <laughs> then I did the five minute fitting. And then I had to go back to the shop for 14 hours to finish it because I got on a plane to London the next morning. Like, it's not that glamorous. It is wildly rewarding and wonderful, but like, just don't try and think you're going to get into the celebrity world and you're going to be partying and drinking champagne. <laughs> That's what they do. <laughs> right. right. They do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. It's, it's always like, it's sort of the facade, you know? Yeah. We have a lot of people, they always, you know, interns, they're like, I want to get into styling because they, they, you know, in the past they would see like Rachel Zoe or they would see the fabulous stylist, the red carpet. And, yeah. and I always say now, are you ready to be in a car for three hours in traffic, going to six malls to pick also, up garments. You have on running shoes. <laughs> if you come in pumping in heels and you got these tiny little arms and you look like you are just having a coffee date, honey, the job is not for you. You're like, bye, Felicia. <laughs> Every stylist I know and all their assistants, you know what they wear? Sweatpants because they are running around town. <laughs> they are like. <laughs> I have to get 15 places in six hours and my team is split up and they're maybe looking cute in their sweatpants or uh -huh. they're active wear. They're turning a look, but they are not turning the look. <laughs> <laughs> so advice here for anybody going into styling or assistant, dress up for the interview, but after that, wear your sweatpants. Is that right, Ashton? 100%. I think that's the most important. Show me who you are. Show me who you are as this creative person because you are also the first person someone's going to see as a direct reflection of me. And I want to know if I say, hey, you have to go here. I want to know what you're going to look like and not be like, are you wearing something inappropriate? Do you look serious? Like, what is the, the protocol? But also, I want to know that you're there to work and you're there to actually get the job done. Right. And like you said, you're they're representing you, the brand as well, you know. All right, so you've designed some of the uh, today's top musical artists. We talked about that. Lizzo, Ariana Grande, Beyonce, Post Malone. Tell us some of, um, you know, what were some, one of your favorite designs or projects that you worked with on them? Um, I mean, so many. Truthfully, I guess I get the amazing opportunity to work with some of the big A-list and it's humbling to know that someone who on such a massive platform appreciates my artwork as well. Um, and on the same side, I love to work with the up and coming. I love to help mold the creative direction for someone who doesn't necessarily have a big team. And that is also beautiful because, you know, 
20 years ago, the artist who's famous now wasn't famous. So right. you have to also think longevity. So don't think I only want to work with A-list because it's now. Well, you haven't solved all the work they put in before that and the team that put in before that. Like, yeah. just pop up and it's just like, here we are. And I think that's important for people to understand too, is don't be afraid to start from the bottom. Don't be afraid to put in work because most of the people I know who started working with stylists uh, and celebrities, they've created decades of bonds and they stay together. It's not just like, oh, you've worked with so-and-so, now I wanna hire you. Yes, that does mm -hmm. happen. However, a lot of times you have to build this trust with clients. And so mm -hmm. starting ground up doesn't have to be a bad idea. So keep that in mind kids no matter what uh there's no shame in putting in a lot of hard work and saying oh who is it are they famous well they're right <laughs> yeah no i i agree nowadays you always hear these um stars that weren't stars maybe right. just two years ago say you know nobody wanted to dress me but there was that ashton michael that right. when i was really nobody he was like yeah i'll make you something or you can wear one of my designs and that relationship continues, yeah. you know? So you hear a lot of that from, from, from stars, you know, a lot of times. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's great advice. So um, tell me what is the most complicated design that you've ever created and why was it complicated? Um, oh my, I don't know. <laughs> um, I really don't know if there's a most complicated because each job, again, is so circumstantial. If we're doing the Super Bowl, we have to make sure the quick change happens in four seconds and it's all tear away. And that tear away oh. has to like, you know, each job has its own massive challenges to make sure because you don't get more than one chance. If you're right. shooting live, it's nerve wracking as a performer. Oh. Sure that, like they're putting your trust <laughs> into you, do you. Not, you do not want a wardrobe malfunction at like, all <laughs> i remember the I, I will say firsthand the one time i got really nervous really nervous <laughs> um I dressed usher for the super bowl god i don't know eight years ago whenever that was a long time ago um, wait, wait stop stop don't just be throwing the name out there and not letting it <laughs> land so I don't um guys he said he was dressing usher uh for the super bowl okay let it land thank so you okay we're... now you can continue <laughs> <laughs> we, <laughs> we were dressing usher and his dancers for the super bowl i'm in texas fitting went great dancers look great he's happy and they're like he's gonna you know be brought in from like above the arena and then he's going to land and then he's going to jump over will and do the splits on stage <laughs> thought, what <laughs> wait he's wearing white pants and he's going to jump over a human and land in the splits as he's wearing drop crotch i was like oh man <laughs> this is gonna be rough. <laughs> so i remember just being on the, like this side of the field just like oh please don't tear please don't tear please don't tear please don't tear and um at that point it was like you're gonna have a janet jackson moment except it's gonna oh. be you know like so i won't say it was the most challenging it was the most nerve-wracking to think don't be that designer oh man like don't do it <laughs> thank god it went successfully and um the you know the show went on flawlessly but that was probably the scariest moment because not only would I know that it happened, I'm physically in front of it, in front of like the biggest televised day in America. And I'm like, oh God, you're going to have to like walk back with your head down really embarrassed. Oh, <laughs> um, I mean, on a good note, at least, I mean, I'm thinking as you described it, at least they were going to be drop crotch pants because if they weren't, I was going to say, oh my gosh, how are you going to sew a gusset? or like a knit kind of panel yeah. down there. So then when he does the splits, nothing, nothing happens. <laughs> right. Oh yeah, that was rough, but it went off really great. But that would be my, my answer to that because each job has its challenges, truthfully. I mean, it's all a different set of rules each time. But that, that I can only imagine. I mean, that is, it's one thing awaiting a celebrity wearing your gown at the Oscars and another thing, like the Super Bowl, millions of people 
there, <laughs> literally almost, and then millions of people watching, and oh. you're like just at home holding a bottle of Tums, you yeah. know, <laughs> like, like, okay, I hope this works out. <laughs> yeah, like, if not, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. I always, you know, that story reminds me, I remember reading uh, Vera Wang used to say that when she would design figure skating costumes for some of the figure skaters like Nancy Kerrigan, Evan Lysacek, et cetera, um, that um, she, couldn't, she, she couldn't be in the arena mm -hmm. um, because she was so afraid, especially these are athletes, it, just like the dancers. I mean, the dancers, yeah at the Super Bowl and some of the dancers you, the, the, the celebrities, artists that you design for, they're, they're athletes. Um, yeah. She just, she couldn't, uh, she couldn't stand like, you know, thinking that maybe a zipper broke or a hook and eye came apart. And especially if they were doing a triple, a triple, triple. So she's like, right. I, I'm out of here. <laughs> it is bad. And I do 99% custom for performance. So, you know, many, many, many years later, it's definitely subsided as far as nerve goes, but it's still that initial, like, it's literally in your hands. You're the last person to touch this before the stylist comes Oy. out. Make sure everything is ready to go. <laughs> are you usually, here's a question, are you usually, like, back, are you usually the last, are you backstage, like, just, like, making sure it's there, or are you back in LA at home, your your team or their assistants have gotten the instructions and done the work. How does that work? Yeah, I, when I was younger, I would be on set, and I think part of it was like peace of mind, and like they'd be like, "Oh, you know, there's no rate for you to be on set," and I'd be like, "I just want to know that <laughs> what I'm delivering is successful, and right. if this button for some reason pops off, I can whip it back on." And uh, for me, it was more about like the final check. Um, but yeah. nowadays, uh, if I don't send a team, uh, they have their teams there. Um, I'm working with really uh, professional camps that are equipped to handle anything. And uh, I get to stay at home and drink my tea. Okay, <laughs> that's good. And, and have the phone right next to you just right. in case, right? Yeah. I mean, I too, like uh, for these kids, quality is really important. So it's not a matter of what you're creating. It has to be what you're creating and the quality you're producing it in. So don't just say I'm making this and it looks great for a photo. Make sure you're making things that are beautiful and you can stand by because guess what? When you're not on set and someone goes through that rack and they see the inside of your garment and it looks like crap, Ooh. you can't justify saying, well, I only had five hours to make this. They don't know that. They're going to see your brand. They're going to see your construction and say, that's the kind of quality quality work they do. So yeah. not only do you have to be a visionary, you have to have great quality and you have to be able to stand by it without standing by it. Does that make yeah. sense? Um, here's some advice. Anybody going into fashion design and if you want to do higher end fashion, when the stores open up <laughs> um, it, after the pandemic, I, I give you some advice. Go to the stores, go to the better stores and take a look at the garments. The inside looks better than the outside. Yeah. So if you want to make garments that you're gonna charge $3,000 for it, it better look $3,000. Exactly. Um, and so that's just some advice because I had to take that. When I started you know, doing our collection and creating our business, where if I had to make $10,000 gowns, I had to go to Bergdorf's, to Saks, to Neiman and be like, ooh, who am I competing with and what do they look like? And I was blown away because I was like, well, okay, okay, this is, this is serious now. <laughs> that's really good advice, Nick. I think that's really important for them to do because it's also free. It's um, yeah. a visual education that you don't have to pay for in addition to whatever education you're getting from the academy. You're saying, oh, that's a different stitch. Why is that stitch this way? Or why is right. it pleat this way? And you really start to train your brain on how to manipulate the garment as a construction. So it's really smart advice. Now, speaking of schooling, tell us about your time at FIDM, at FIDM. Um, was your major fashion design? No, my major was um, apparel manufacturing. Apparel manufacturing. So what, um, did you like your pattern classes? 
I did. Um, I like math. <laughs> so, uh, you know, patterns is a lot of math. And also it is sort of the groundwork for what's going to be the final product. So I thought for me, it was really important to learn the foundation because even if you are a creative director, you have a concept, it doesn't matter if you don't understand the guts of how things are happening. Because even if you have a huge team doing it, you have to be able to explain to them, hey, I want this manipulated this way. I want this done this way. Not just say, hey, I want this. <laughs> well, what is this? It's a, it's a black square. Like, what, what, what is this? Or is it a rectangle that has, you know, rounded edges? And you have to be able to articulate what your vision is, even if you have a massive factory working for you. So pattern was great. School was great. Uh, I didn't go for fashion design on purpose because I knew I was going to start a company and I wanted mm -hmm. to find both. I wanted to learn the foundations of fashion business and I wanted to learn yeah. fashion production. Wonderful, wonderful. And I think that's so great. It's so true. I'm like, preach it, preach it, preach it. Um, you know, and that's why like at FITM, we teach you the fundamentals, the foundation. And while you may not understand then like, why am I learning all this? And that, and just, just listen, just mm -hmm. play back what Ashton just said. <laughs> it's so then you, if you do start a business or and you, you can, tell your workers what to do and how to do it and they will respect you more. You know, yeah. I also paid attention to the pattern classes and I was a fashion design major. And I remember that when I started working in the industry and I started working as an assistant designer and then I actually became a pattern maker, um, the seamstresses were shocked, beyond shocked, when I would be like, okay, so I need you to do this baby hem, fold it once, a quarter of a um, stitch and then do another quarter of a stitch. And then I want you to, and they literally would, you know, and I speak Spanish, so they would look and be like, mijo. <laughs> They'd be like, como sabes esto? How do you know? How do you know? And I, because, and, and they literally would then tell me in Spanish, you know, nobody, none of the other designers here, they don't know the, the stuff you're telling me. And I'm like, well, <laughs> and they respected me so much. Um, so I think it goes a long way that to, to, to learn those things, because mm -hmm. in the end, you will be respected by your pattern makers, your seamstresses, yeah. and, and it also, it'll help you. Like Ashton said, knowing how to build a garment is so important to building the garment. You know, it's just like, like you're making a recipe. It's important yep. to know the right olive oil. It's important to have the right mushrooms or the right tomatoes. And that is all part of all the ingredients that makes a, a perfect garment, right? Yeah. 100%. And the one where you just mentioned, I think, is the key. The word is respect. If you want to be respected as an artist and a designer, you better be educated on it. Because I'll tell you right now, the amount of times that people come in, whether it's intern or employee applications, and they look the part, but I see through their BS, uh -huh. yeah. never be hired by me. Because I want you to understand and respect the craft you're in and not respect the idea that you're in this entertainment world and you possibly might meet somebody. I do not care about that. <laughs> people who are hardworking and care about their craft because it's a disrespect to myself, the brand and other designers if your motive is not actually fashion design. So really love this craft. And if you don't, do not do this. Did you hear that? <laughs> this is tough love because, you know, it, it's very strange and it is disrespectful when people think it is um, a more glamorous job than it is. It's a lot of hard work. It's very gratifying, but pay respect to it. Be yeah. acknowledging what it took for centuries of fashion designers and construction and visionaries to come to this point. And just because you want to post a picture on Instagram, don't do that. <laughs> Yeah, I always say back it up. You know, we the fashion industry is a very visual um, industry, just like the entertainment industry. So a lot of times, unfortunately, yes, a lot of people, I mean, not myself, but there are, you You might get hired just by the way you look. Mm -hmm. and, and like you said, you may look the part, but here's the thing. Once you, that'll get you through the door because you look the part. But then if you can't back it up, that's when you're like, bye because we, we we know right Ashton, that there's 10 other people that will back it up and yeah. look and look cute too right. <laughs> and you know it's funny because i think that people really still have that um misconception and i do blame a little bit of social media because most people myself whoever included will only 
put up positive things. They're going to say, this is the outcome. Like, oh, gorgeous. Look at this team. Look at all this. And I do put up a lot of like <laughs> grittier stuff because I think it's important. But most of the time, um, it's, it's pictured very picturesque. Done right. in a very like, look how amazing this is. But like, it's not that real. <laughs> <laughs> it's all smoke and mirrors. So be understanding that even if you're seeing a beautiful product or a beautiful collection, there was yelling, there was blood, there was sweat, there was tears, there was all kinds <laughs> of stuff that went on to create that. And it's important to respect and acknowledge that whole process. So what advice, if somebody's considering, let's say somebody who's watching us right now, um, if somebody's considering attending FITM, what advice would you give them? The same way as you would be applying for a job. If you go into class every single day and you're not invested in it, reprioritize. If you're only there because you, your friend is there or whatever, reprioritize. I'm not saying don't go. I'm saying make sure you're investing time and more importantly, money. Both those things you really got to be aware of because they go hand in hand with your education. Even after you've graduated, you're going to be paying off student loans most likely for a lot of these kids. So if you're going there and you really want to be this, dive in, like really throw the gloves off and get gritty with it because it'll be so gratifying and so wonderful for you to understand and appreciate the new path you have. Um, but don't go there and half-ass it. I'm being very, <laughs> you're going to end up being stressed out. Your mom going mad because you owe her a ton of money. And then, you know, <laughs> You're going to be miserable because you wasted years of your life and you're going to feel defeated. So I really want people to go there with the entirety of succeeding. This is the whole mm -hmm. point. This is creating the foundation for your future. And I think you need to treat it like a job application. If you go into this and you say, oh, I'm so tired. I can't do this project. I just really want to like <laughs> watch the real housewives of some terrible city. Then that's the problem. <laughs> You need to be invested in this because it's the same way if I had an intern and be like, oh, I'm really tired. My hands hurt. Can I just like finish this tomorrow? No, because the job is due today. Yeah. <laughs> today. You don't right. get the luxury to say when you want to get it done. So invest, believe in yourself and commit to the whole process. Good, good, good. Good advice. Good advice. Okay. One final question. Then we're going to start the Q&A feature. Um, oh, yeah, make sure to use the Q&A feature, everybody who's attending this wonderful panel discussion. Um, okay, one final question. How did you get, it's just inquiring minds want to know, Ashton, how okay. did you get Post Malone to wear pink and sequins? Um, that would be his stylist. Uh, she is really awesome. She's actually a costume designer as well for TV. Uh-huh. Um, and so she, has a really great relationship with him and he trusts her immensely so luckily i get to sort of be part of this third third wheel of creative with them because she can really get him to do basically anything yeah we really get to create because usually you'd see this tattooed rapper and you wouldn't expect him to look a certain way but post is such a sweet wonderful creative man that he knows that there's nothing malice that's going to happen. There's no sabotage happening. I'm going to put you in pink. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, it's, uh, it's really cool to work with clients like that because they allow the creative freedom. And working with Kathy has been great too because she'll say, hey, we want to create something like this. And I'd be like, oh, cool. We can use this embellishment and this and that. And let's create the pattern this way, but let's stay away from doing it on the collar because it's going to pop up. And it's good. like, so between all three of us, I think it really is cool to see uh, trust, which is another big one. When the client trusts you, yeah, be an artist, you get to put them in pink and rhinestones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, good. Well said. Um, I have to say, I thank you for uh, being part of this, this vanguard of, of streetwear designers that are influencing the world of fashion. I know that even now, it's like, yeah, a year ago, it was streetwear, streetwear, streetwear luxury streetwear and now it's like you know if you're a fashionista you're like oh streetwear um, right. but i i think that that your your la upbringing your the entertainment celebrity the dressing down but dressing up all of that has influenced fashion so much it's so evident 
that when you see it in the brands like Balenciaga, Bama, mm -hmm. Gucci, I think that they, they really are listening to people like you that, are, that you are right there in the street right. seeing the people and yeah. what they're wearing and how they're, they're, they're manipulating fashion to, sure. to make it their own. And so I, I thank you for that. Well, thank you guys, the world, for allowing it to be, you know, um, a not so put in a box category because 90% right. of the people every day wear streetwear. You know what I mean? Yeah, true. <laughs> okay, guys, so let's start the questions. Anybody have any questions? Any questions that you want to ask Ashton? Anybody? <laughs> like, no. Let's do, hold on. I think here we go. All right, let's start. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Madison wants to know, how do you know where to start a design? I have inspiration, but I never know how to transfer it to paper. What do you think, Ashton? Well, if you're already transferring it to paper, you're in the right step. I think taking concept to reality, like you said earlier, you can journal, you can pull physical references, you can do whatever, but really just start. Don't think that you have to have the entire concept done. You could grab one element, put it on the dress farm and say, great, I'm going to work as this my focal point and I'm going to build on that. And if you don't have a dress farm and you don't have materials, do it on paper. I'm going to work with this focal point and I'm going to build it. Maybe it's a shoulder. Great. I have an idea that I want this ethereal piece. Start with the shoulder, draw, retrace, draw again, reconcept and kind of puzzle piece things together. And by the end, you Frankenstein something really beautiful. Together. Yeah. By the end, it's like, woof, one there it is. And it's <laughs> okay. done. It just doesn't Ashton, exist. Were, were there times you felt like you wanted to give up? Now, we're going to get a little deep here because the job got too hard. This is from Carly Pomerantz. Absolutely. What did you do? What did you do to get past that? Carly um, wants to know. We, Carly, we are humans and we have emotions <laughs> and we have limitations. And it is absolutely okay to feel like giving up. And it is absolutely okay to feel these emotions. The important thing is to say, am I operating out of fear? Am I operating out of disappointment? Am I operating because I'm no longer passionate about this? Really dissect why you want to give up and address those issues. Because I can guarantee you it's probably not about your art. It's probably about a different politic topic. Ooh, all right. Do you have any tips? Now this is from Lara Isabel Soriano. I know oh, I, I sounded. I sounded like a Telemundo host. Um, do you have any tips for time management at FIDM? At FIDM? Um, I mean, FIDM and anywhere else, I would say, if you're given um, a deadline by tomorrow, break it down, create a schedule, do an iCal, say, great, I'm going to give myself two hours to draw, an hour to drape, four hours to draft, three hours to eat, one hour to call my mom, and then I'm going <laughs> to... That's it. <laughs> wow. Just create a schedule, have a schedule. Okay, Peyton Northup wants to know, what tips do you have for someone who wants to design for film, TV, and celebrities? I would say go to, if you're in LA or any other sort of film capital, go to the costume houses, go to CRC, go to Warner Brothers, go to Universal, go to these places and walk around, get really accustomed to what it takes. And like you said, look at the construction, do all these things, network, start meeting people there. You could be up and down an aisle and meet the costume designer for the next major motion picture. And they could say, oh, hey, what are you doing here? And you could be like, nothing, I'm trying to learn, I'm trying to be an intern. And guess what? They may need a runner that day. They may need someone yeah. like, to run around and you just got your first job. Submerge yourself into the field you want to be a part of. Don't look at it from the sidelines and expect grand things. Dive in. Good, good answer. Okay, we have Alexis Glockner wants to know, hi, what advice would you give for organizing a fashion show and designing a collection with a limited amount of time, Ashton? I mean, that's my every collection. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, that's a Tuesday. That's a Tuesday. I'm like, <laughs> That's literally every collection I've ever done. Um, again, it's just time management. Think within your means. If you only have a few weeks to do something, don't do 45 pieces. Do six, and those six better be the strongest 45 pieces you've ever made. Very good. All right, what kind of job do you recommend starting out to get involved in the industry? This comes from Elizabeth Heydrich. What was the question one more time? What kind of job, Elizabeth wants to know, what kind of job do you recommend starting out with uh, to get involved in the fashion industry? Um, 
Same thing, intern, reach out to people that you admire in the industry. And I will say this right now, do not send a DM. Do not. <laughs> if there's a button on their Instagram page that says email or contact, you do that. click it. Because anytime I get a request in DMs, you are denied. 100%. Ooh. It is lazy. If I'm giving you an opportunity to say, contact me professionally, and you've chosen a lazy way, I'm already <laughs> seeing your mentality. Do not do that, kids. Take the effort to put in the work. And if it's not on the Instagram page, go to a website, go to their contact, fill out the form, put in the work to be professional from step one. Wow. All right. Well, you heard it here, guys. Okay. We have a question from Sam Moyet or Moyet. If I major in fashion, will I be able to work in costume design? Well, I can answer that. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, if you if you major in fashion design, first of all, you never know where you might end up with uh, because you do want to take any job that comes up. And then before you know it, you might end up in costume design. So it's it's all it's all relative. It's still it's it is still fashion. Costume design is just another realm, another world. Um, so yeah, it, it, you you can or you can go the other way around. My partner David, he got his master's in costume design, and then he ended up being my co-design partner at Nikolaiki. So it works both ways. So there, I answered that. Okay, well, let me see, what else do we have? Um, how do you learn good pattern making skills and higher end sewing techniques pre-college? Do you wanna help with that, Ashton? You take that one. Oh, Ashton. <laughs> oh. Well, here's the thing. I am get you for that. I'm a hand, I'm gonna let you really answer this, but in a very quick thing, I'm a hands-on person. So like I live in South Central and if I've learned anything from people in factories, I like to watch. And till this day, I love learning. So I will go in and I will watch them do different sewing techniques, different machines. And so even if you're not in school, again, reach out, do the real, yeah. like really do your homework and do it, whether it's YouTube, whether it's in person, whatever it is, you have so much information available right now. You can research a hashtag called pattern making and I'm sure- Yes, something. yes. Like use your millennial things and your Gen Z or whatever it is now <laughs> and make it benefit you, you know what I mean? Like really for me, it's about learning hands-on. I can learn from a book and that's fine, but if I can visually see someone do something, I'm gonna retain that information a lot more quickly and effectively. Yeah would by being like and then a quarter inch later they're like well, <laughs> tell me what that means <laughs> um basically guys ashton answered the question because that is what i was going to say especially nowadays like ashton said you can google pattern and so there are so many youtube videos that i'm even amazed at what's out there in terms of pattern making in terms of haute couture skills I love, you know, I follow some of the big brands like Dior and, um, you know, some of the high-end brands that do uh, alt couture, they put out these videos. Now, while they might be short and I would love for them to be longer, they give you like a four or five minute behind the scenes on how to sew these high-end techniques. But then there are videos for that as well. And there are pattern making and draping uh, tutorials, videos, demos. So especially nowadays during the pandemic where you really maybe can't physically go into somebody's design studio, um, I think go out there and, and teach yourself, prepare yourself um, by going online and doing the Gen Z thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, <clears throat> oh, from Julia. Gilachi. Maybe I mispronounced your name. When you get to the point when you can politely turn down a gig or are you allowed to even at the beginning? Again, um, there's no rules to your own brand or your own company. Be respectful because know that the person that you may say no to in a rude way could be a big person in the future. So you have to understand that there is business etiquette on top of just being an artist. Conduct yourself in a nice manner. If you're going to be a, I almost cussed, if you're going to be a bad person, <laughs> guess what? That person's going to remember that. And yeah. the next time your name possibly comes across their desk and they're maybe the CEO this time of something else, I'm like, nope, because I don't want to work with them. So right. it's not a matter of saying no because you're being arrogant or disrespectful. It's saying no because you're choosing yourself or something that doesn't feel right for you. 
Good, good job. Okay, Jesse wants to know who is your favorite. Oh, I don't know if you want to is just say this, but if you can, um, Jesse wants to know who is your favorite celebrity to dress. My mom. Oh, <laughs> she's the good biggest answer. Woman. And I love making her clothes because she gets way too excited. <laughs> I'm like, Mom, that's my that's my favorite. <laughs> that's my favorite client too. It's like she 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 don't care what what how long the sleeve is. She's just happy her son made her a sleeve. <laughs> She's like, is that a bottle of red wine? And are we gonna hang out? And you're gonna drape some fabric on me? It's like, right, right. <laughs> Here. Exactly. Here All right, guys, we're almost done. Anything else that you want to tell our wonderful students attending this second day of Three Days of Fashion? Um, Ashton, Michael, it's all you. Um, I will say this. Um, I am very sarcastic and I'm very uh, real, but I will say that there's a lot of hard work no matter what you do. And don't get discouraged. Uh, you're going to have ups and downs. You're going to have highlights and then absolute moments where you want to quit. And then in the minute later, you're going to have a moment you're like, oh God, I figured it out. That was so much easier than I thought. I was just frustrated. So I will say, do this with your full heart and do it with all the passion you have and know that like you are also an opportunity to educate other people. Don't be afraid of helping your peers. Don't be afraid of competition. Don't be afraid of making yourself vulnerable. All three of those things make you a stronger person, a better artist and a successful business person. All right. Sorry, anybody out there, we didn't get to all the questions and answer your questions. I profusely apologize. I saw one last comment. Somebody says that they would love to have Ashton as their therapist. Which I think <laughs> is kind of cool. <laughs> we'll go together. It'll be group therapy. <laughs> yes, it'll be group therapy. We'll do it a little bit later. So instead of coffee, we can have something a little, a little stronger. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you, everyone who. Um, attended this wonderful panel discussion. I had a great time and we could just keep going on and yeah. on and on. And I would and I would just make it a big Q&A, three hour Q&A session because yeah. Ashton will make sure to answer all the questions if we did. <laughs> so once again, Ashton Michael, celebrity designer to the stars. Um, and always keeping it real down to his tattoos and our <laughs> FIDM, very proud FIDM alum. I bow down to you and um, thank you for being a brother from another mother. And thank you everyone again for attending our wonderful Three Days of Fashion FITM alumni panel discussion. Thank you guys. Want to say bye? Bye everybody. Be 